Hello and welcome back. And uh, in this video, we are going to be looking at another example of gradient. And this time we are going to look at a uh, linear gradient uh, first. And then we're going to uh, maybe like, you know, look at some animation as well for the gradient. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, I've got the basic template here. So what, I'm gonna, what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to create a state variable. And this is going to contain colors for gradient uh, that you can apply. Now, um, you can have as many colors as you want. Uh, really, uh, it's just an array. Uh, but, like, you know, I'm, I've just been given two. I mean, I've, I've been giving it two because, like, you know, two colors, I feel like, you know, the transition between two colors is different. But depending upon your requirement, you can actually add more colors. All right, so uh, do we need another? I don't think we need another uh, variable. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to first understand, like, you know, how uh, the linear gradient actually works. Uh, all, all the other gradients actually, in the, as a matter of fact, uh, have, like, you know, different parameters. Uh, we already see uh, saw an example of angular uh, gradient, so you already have, like, you know, some context on how uh, gradients uh look like basically they accept like you know some sort of starting and ending point uh, some sort of gradient so let's take a look at like linear gradient what it, what it expects so we're going to create a z stack first and this in the z stack we're going to create a rectangle and this rectangle is going to have a fill okay and uh, we will create linear gradient All right, um, and this expects gradient. So when we create gradient object, right, uh, gradient object expects uh, two different properties, two different overloads. There's a color, there's a stop. In the upcoming videos, we're gonna see how stops work. So let's go ahead and deal with colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna supply our state variable that we have created for gradient color into this. So gradient color, okay, start in, start point and end point. Now these are values uh, that are predefined. There is an enum, but you can create unit point on your own as well with your own values. So all you do is you say unit point and uh, then you give it an x, y value and it takes the x, y value. For our example, I think uh, the predefined uh, enum is gonna work fine. So we're gonna use that. So gonna say it's gonna the gradient is gonna start at the top leading so at the top corner and it's gonna end at bottom trading at the bottom corner okay bottom right corner okay with that we are actually um, done with uh, the gradient and that's all it takes basically to generate gradient and uh, then we can apply some animation and this animation is gonna be simply like you know applying the color so animation dot and we're going to use ease in and out with um so ease in and out ease in maybe okay and uh duration oh we don't need duration actually so we, we are good okay and then we're going to have a gesture and this gesture is going to be tap gesture so whenever the user taps on the screen the gradient is going to change okay and we're going to say on ended um and uh we don't need anything here and we are simply going to set our gradient color. Now, uh, we could set like, you know, a gradient color here, or what we could do is basically generate a gradient color, uh, generate a color, random color uh, for us uh, that we can populate uh, that value inside this for these gradient colors. So let's go ahead and create a function. And we're going to say get random color in here. And this is going to return a color gonna create RGB value so for red you're gonna say double dot random in and we're gonna say we need value between zero and one I'm gonna copy and paste these three times so we're gonna say G and B three values that we're getting and we're gonna return color with RGB space so R G B, excuse me. There we go. 
Now what we can do is we can simply say self dot gradient color is equal to self dot get random color and self dot get random color. This is going to give us two colors, two random colors, uh, and they're going to work fine for our case. Okay, we're going to make sure edges in ignoring safe area is set to all. And with that, our example is ready. So let's go ahead and run this. And um, if it executes fine, this is what we're going to find. And uh, as we tap, you can see our view is slowly changing to a mix of really beautiful gradient colors. All right. So that's the example of how you can actually uh, get the gradient working. Now, let's go ahead and um, take a look at another example where we're going to um, create uh, sort of a uh, sort of an animation. Okay. So uh, what we can do is, uh, can we reuse this? We can use gradient color. We can create unit point array. point dot bottom to start with bottom bottom leading bottom trailing And the last one is trailing. There you go. Okay. And uh, now we can we're gonna create basically uh, two more or three more state variables. I'm gonna say I'm gonna copy this and start point. It's gonna be of unit point. Then we're gonna have end point. unit point and we're going to have count okay. now or we're going to put our initializer so we can initialize all these undefined or uninitialized values so this is how you can uh, initialize your state variables so you can say initial value and you can give it like the default so we're going to say bottom underscore endpoint is state initial value dot trailing something like that okay now um, within our body we can once again uh, create a linear gradient so let's let's use the linear gradient as the um, uh, as the view okay so we're going to create linear gradient with uh, gradient um, colors so gradient and um, you can say colors there we go and it's going to be gradient color like so and for the start and end point we're going to say start point and end point okay now we can say edges ignoring safe area all we're gonna say animation and now we can apply the animation dot ease in out okay with duration one okay we're gonna repeat this animation forever with auto reverse to true okay and uh, then on appear Gonna give it a closure, but we're gonna say self dot start point is equal to self dot unit point array, and we're gonna reference that array, and we're gonna simply say int dot random, and uh, we're gonna get random value from 
that heated point array. Okay. All right. So I'm going to copy that and paste it for the end point. And don't forget to increment the count. There we go. Okay. Now, um, we actually don't really need the count, I feel, because uh, we are getting the random value, so we should be okay without using it. Okay, I started it out. Okay. So I'm going to resume this. And um, let's go ahead and try it out. So we are going to say this. And as you can see on up here, we are getting this nice effect where your gradient is changing from different directions. And because of the animation, it's actually sort of like, you know, flopping back and forth, applying animation, but we are getting this effect right here. So that's how you can actually um, animate your gradient. Now, you can come up with like, you know, really complex examples of this, but I just want to show you like, you know, how easy it is to basically apply an animation if you like to apply an animation within the gradient view and use gradient as your main view, okay? So hope uh, this was uh, helpful and thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in next video.